We're back with yet another Amazon switch panel. Hopefully Pontoon Stuff has their panels coming in pretty soon here. But I'm gonna show you how to install this one in case this is what you pick up from Amazon. Uh, these have been great switch panels for us. This one's a little different, so I'm excited to try it. And I'll show you how I'm gonna wire it into this boat. One quick note here. I've got power hooked up to our power. I've grounded the ground. There's two power wires on here. This is power to the switch. This, uh, the on off switch. This is power to all the switches. So ideally here, we're gonna be able to wire all of our accessories in here. Uh, and then this power switch here will wire power to that as well. So we can turn on uh, the chargers and everything. So right now, this is kind of funny. It's in the on position. The switch is upside down. That should be on. That turns on voltage and everything. That will turn on my USB charger, powers up all those bottom accent light on the switches. We'll probably omit that because I don't want to kill extra power. They're LEDs. They don't take a lot. But first thing I'm going to do is move this or rotate this switch so that it's properly aligned so it turns on and off the way it should. So what I've done now is I gator clipped my positive on the wire that's connected to all the switches. And that what that's going to do is when I flip my switch on, it's going to power my switch. So that's actually the one that really is important to power the switch. The other power wire on the top here this one is for your USB, your voltage gauge, uh, your cigarette lighter. And then if you look, this is that wire that powers your USB and your, your 12 volt and your voltage gauge. Then it jumps to the bottom of all the switches. And that's what happens when we turn the, the switch to the on position. That's what lights the bottoms of all these lights. If you don't want that to happen, quick and easy, we're just gonna snip that and cut it off because I don't need those switches all illuminated if they're not on. So that's what that bottom run of positives is for, just to power the bottom of that switch. And then all of these posts here, that's what our accessories are gonna run off of. And we're gonna put a fuse in line on those, a little 10 amp fuse for each of these. So it's something that can be replaced or repaired if a fuse ever pops. It's just a couple detents on each side that you pinch and then it pops right out. I just twisted it, didn't even have to undo any wires. The other thing I need to do is I'm gonna get rid of this first switch and replace it with a rock or horn switch. So this I also got on Amazon or a few bucks, uh, but that gives me the ability to have the momentary horn button and it matches and it's already labeled. So that's gonna replace this first switch. So we'll have our horn as our first switch and then we'll go navigation lights and we've talked about this before but this is going to power all of my navigation lights my front running lights and my stern light will all be on or off and then we'll go to docking lights uh, and then we'll go to interior leds and then i typically will power the stereo uh, off of another one of these so the cool thing is we're going to have an extra switch because on this panel which is different than a lot of them this on off switch powers these items uh, which is going to save Typically in the past, if you watch my videos, I've had to use one of these other switches to power up our chargers and voltage gauge. I like this so far. To swap out this, uh, this first switch, same thing, I'm just gonna pinch these detents down and they're gonna pop that switch right out and then I can plug the wires onto my horn. While I'm in here too, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this wire off of all of these. We'll cut it and cap it here so power can't jump. Uh, and then I'll just have to remember that my power out is going to be on this post right underneath the power to the switch. So this is power coming in to the switches, and then this is power out to the accessory. So here's where we're at. I've got our power going into that power save switch that's going to power the voltage gauge, USB, and 12 volt. So what I'm going to do now is I've got these also off Amazon, this little inline, they cap up so they're gonna be watertight and resist corrosion. I'll put a fuse in there, 10 amp fuse for each of these, uh, and I'll cut the wire here and I'll splice in a spade terminal on one side that looks like this. So we'll splice that in here. Then our fuse will run out. And on the other end, 
I'll have an inline, I think these are 14 gauge, so it's gonna have to be a little bit bigger, but we'll do a, just a heat shriek butt splice. I'll get all of those pigtails run off for all my accessories and I can splice them in. The only exception, I'll have to use a bigger butt splice for my navigation lights because we're gonna run all of that front and rear light. It's gonna be two different wires that come into one on switch. If you watch a lot of our videos, you know how happy we are when we get to use the pontoonstuff.com wiring harness. So what we have here, this runs back to the battery. This has all of my wires that are running, my horn, my docking lights, uh, they're all color coded and they come with instructions. So it tells you what wires are what, but pretty universal here. This is gonna be a quick plug. So we're gonna keep this intact in case somebody ever wanted to swap things out or whatever it might be. Uh, and then we have basically just power coming into our switch panel, ground coming into our switch panel. Uh, and that way all of our accessories can share this ground. The only ground I'm gonna have to add in is gonna be for the lights, that, the interior lights that I wired in, uh, cause those are after thought or after market. I didn't splice those into one of these wires. But then we have a, a horn lead. We have a, our navigation lights up front that's the gray with a green stripe. We have a gray with a blue stripe. That's our stern light. So these will become one and they'll splice into one switch. Docking light is the gray with the black stripe. This would be an accessory uh, switch as well or accessory wire for like a live well or whatever you want to do, another 10 amp. But we're just going to omit that. We're not going to hook anything to it. So these will all splice in. Yeah, I'm probably just going to cut these off and use a heat shrink just because I want it to be one and done. To get you caught up where we're at, we had these two powers that come in for our main harness. So I just brought those together, ran a splice. This goes to our power in from the harness, our ground coming in from the harness. That is tied in as well as the ground for my stereo and my LEDs, interior LEDs. Those are all going to come in and come together to one ground that goes to all of our switches. So common ground. Hope that makes sense. We had to get all those extra grounds, the stereo and the LED lights together and tie them into this ground that goes to the battery and the switches. So that's what we did there. Kind of like a little Y harness here to bring those grounds together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these ends off, pull that back and I've got all of my inline fuses. We'll put a 10 amp fuse in each of these. Those are all ready to go with heat shrink butt splices intact. And to make everything easier, I just went ahead and unplugged that so I can work with this freely, get everything wired in, fuses in, and then we're ready to go. The big notable on here is that gray with green and gray with blue. I'm bringing those together and those will both splice into that navigation light switch. If the switch had, you know, push forward for all your lights and then back for just the anchor light, that would be different, but we're putting these all together on and off for all of our lights, stern and front lights. Orange will go to our horn. Gray with black is going to go to docking lights. Fuses in. All we got to do is put that little lid on. It snaps into place. That's going to protect it from the elements. Shouldn't get much all the way in. Shouldn't get much underneath the console in terms of moisture anyway, but better safe than sorry. We'll cover all these up and hit it with some power. The only other thing I didn't mention is I did run a power direct. This is from the stereo to this switch. So we'll have one extra switch, that's okay. Uh, but that is, there is already an inline fuse behind the stereo. So no need to add a fuse there. We've got a fuse for the stereo already. And then this will just be a free switch. Uh, we I probably will, we'll just put one more, you know, fuse with a butt splice hanging off to make it accessible if the customer ever wants to add anything else. Last step is going to be plugging this back in and then I'll hook power to our harness and see how everything goes. We're back at the battery. This is a resettable. There's a little switch here on the side. If you lose power to the dash, always check this first. It may just need to be reset. It's a 20 amp resettable. Uh, always Put your battery terminals on first, then your accessory terminals. Then ideally, I don't like to see wing nuts. I'm gonna tighten this with a wrench, uh, but ideally you'd use a stainless nut on there that you can tighten down with a wrench because they tend to vibrate out and then they can arc and do all kinds of funny stuff. So 
tighten those down nice and snug, but this gets us to where we can test everything. Moment of truth. If I flip this on, voltage is on, USB has power. If you turn that off, it kills power to both. So again, if you don't have anything hooked up, you don't need voltage. We do have a volt gauge here as well. So you may not use a whole lot of this function unless you are actually charging something here. But then we've got our horn. We've got our navigation lights, our docking lights, LED lights in front. Uh, and then we have our cabin lights, our interior lights here. And our power up for our stereo. So that'll, a lot of times you flip that switch on, you're gonna power up the stereo right away. One thing I will say is I do not recommend using the screws that come with this panel. I uh, found that they are not stainless, they're painted, they probably last a long time, but if they get scuffed, they're gonna rust on you over time. What I like about this panel, especially is when I turn everything off, all my lights are off, we are ready to head in and not have to worry about draining the battery. We've got a power off here, so we know that this is no longer getting any power. Pretty cool setup, really happy how this turned out. We'll throw four screws in and this is a wrap.